Hello and welcome. AI, could it enhance my job as an Azure AD administrator? I think the answer is a definitive yes. Can I rely on what it tells me to do or how it explains how something works? Today, a definitive no. In the future, maybe. In this session, I decided to look at AI. There is so much hype out there, so I wanted to investigate how AI could help me be more effective in my job. I discovered a complete training and learning buddy, someone I can bounce ideas off and who can help me solve problems. I'm going to take you through a series of scenarios. There are, there are many AI systems available, but I decided to focus on chat GPT. In the first scenario, I will show you a live chat GPT session, just in case you haven't experienced one. In the other scenarios, I will talk through the results in chat history. So don't forget to subscribe and learn, buckle up your seatbelt, and let's get started. In the first scenario, I'm going to use chat GPT to interpret and explain some of the data structures used when a user authenticates to Azure AD. Okay, I'm working on my client and Fiddler is running. So we'll just minimize that for the moment. And I'm going to sign in to an application. And this is sort of my framework test application. I'm going to use OpenID Connect sign in to Azure AD. So we're going to go off to Azure AD. And when we go to Azure AD, we're basically saying to Azure AD, please authenticate this user for this application. And that's all held in the URL that we send to Azure AD. So we grab that URL. There's an awful lot of very valuable information in here, which we can look at in Notepad. And I could spend a lot of time breaking this down, but I'm actually not going to do that here in this session. What I want to do is show you how ChatGPT can be your buddy. So I'm going to um, look at things like decoding this URL in here, and I'm going to grab the whole lot, and I'm going to give it to ChatGPT and ask it to decode it and explain it. So decode and explain, just drop that lot in. And what it is doing, it's breaking this up into its constituent parts. So the initial URL endpoint, the client ID, the redirect URI, all sorts of bits and pieces. And as I say, I'm not going to explain this. Uh, ChatGPT is doing it, but we're not going to spend time looking at the exact detail. But look up here and we can see that we've got a URL decode of the uh, redirect string. So there's our redirect string and it's nicely decoded for us to read here. One thing you might want to do is sort of look at the response type. Well, it's ID token, so it's asking for an ID token, but what other response types have we got available to us? And if we look here, what options are available, we can see that it comes back with all sorts of details that we can look at. Okay, really helpful. You know, I, I'd be using all sorts of tools to try and find out what was going on. Now I'm completing the sign-in process. So now we're signed in. Now let's look at the actual Fiddler trace. Again, I will go over this in a future video, but basically we've started off at our application. We then click the link, we end up at login.microsoftonline.com. That's where we went to. We then supply our password, etc., and we have a last interaction with login.microsoftonline.com. If we grab that and decode it, the response, uh, we can see that it's a bunch of HTML uh, code. So let's grab the whole thing and let's ask ChatGPT to tell us about it. So again, back to ChatGPT, and we say explain, all right? And it's going off and it's breaking this down. And, oh, it doesn't look like it's done a very good job of it. Uh, it's very minimal. The 
Given Code's HTML page that contains a form with some hidden input fields and JavaScript code block that submits the form automatically when the page loads. Okay, um, I want more details than that. So I actually go and ask ChatGPT for more details. So we'll actually do that here. And it then comes back and it sort of starts breaking this down in detail. So it's telling you about the form, it's telling you about the post method, it's telling you about holding an ID token, set session state, etc., etc. So it's giving you a lot of information. What could we ask it now? Well, we could ask it what state meant, what session state was. But what I'm going to do is ask it to decode the ID token. So it's going off and it's now breaking the ID token down into its constituent parts. Okay, and then once it's broken this down into its components, uh, it can actually explain what some of the claims are to us. So it will now start giving us a description of the different claims that we've got. You know, which is, uh, again, amazingly powerful that we can get this sort of level of detail from it. And if we scroll back up here, we've got issued at IAT. Well, it was explained that's when the token was issued. So let's grab this number and ask ChatGPT what this number means. And what it does is it responds and tells us the meaning of that number. Now, the thing is, I don't believe that this is correct because I issued this token on the 8th of March and it's showing me that the number relates to January the 5th, 2023. It's got it it's right. It's actually telling me that, you know, it's, it's derived from epoch time. All right, so it's epoch time or Unix epoch time, uh, which is the number of seconds since January the 1st, 1970. But I think that's wrong. So I'm going to ask it, are you sure you have decoded this value correctly? Okay, so we'll do that. And let's see how it responds. And it's coming back with a new time. And I think that is actually still wrong. Well, I know it's still wrong. It's saying it's January the 6th, 2023. So I don't know why it, it knows how to calculate it uh, or it knows how it should be calculating it, but it's getting the calculation wrong. So let's compare it with an epoch time decoder. And this one I use, which is an online epoch time decoder. And we'll use that here, which is epochconverter.com. I'm going to just grab this number again. So we'll get the number and we'll pop that in here and ask it to come back with the correct timestamp. Wednesday, the 8th of March at uh, 1753, exactly the time I created this token. So we're going to drop that in there and we'll just explain to it is, you know, shown by the, uh, well, Let's describe it, Epoch Time Converter. And pop that in. And what we'll also do is put the number back in so there's no ambiguity here. We'll put this number in. So we're saying that this is the time that is shown by epochconverter.com. And it says, I apologize, you're right. Ah, and thank you for bringing it to my attention. Okay, well, that was a very quick response. Is it just sort of keeping us happy or does it now believe that the new calculation is correct? So let's go and grab the other timestamp in here, which is the expiry time, which will be approximately an hour later. And let's drop that in here and ask it, it, what time is this? And see what it comes back with. And yes, it's come back. It's the 8th of uh, March, it's 6.58 p.m. And it was issued at 5.53 p.m. So that is actually correct. So ChatGPT, has it learned? Will it remember this?
Hmm, interesting. I think that was immensely powerful. It gives you a tremendous start when trying to understand and troubleshoot operations. But Unix time was interesting. It knew what was required to calculate the result. A relatively simple calculation. But it got it wrong. It even corrected itself and got it wrong again. Feed it a genuine result and then it knows how to calculate it. How does it do that? I wish I knew more about AI and how AI systems worked out the results they give. In scenario two, I set ChatGPT the task of creating a PowerShell script. So I'm going to use ChatGPT to generate me a certain number of users in my Azure AD based on users defined in a CSV file. So let's just have a quick look at that CSV file. And we can see that we have uh, Jilly Banks, um, given name Jill, surname, mail nickname, usage location, and password. Probably I shouldn't have the password in here, but you know, this is a demo. So let's, uh, that's my CSV file. Now, in terms of telling chat GPT, what I've got in here is I'm saying from a CSV file, I'm actually giving the path to the CSV file and telling it what it contains. And it's a list of users arranged and I'm telling it the column he headers. And I'm saying, create a PowerShell script to create the users in Azure AD. Make sure the accounts are enabled and the password does not require changing at next logon. So that's my brief. Very quickly, ChatGPT comes back with a PowerShell script, a little explanation of what it's doing. And also it says that you need to install the Azure AD module. So that's what it's come back with. So let's grab this script and let's go over to my dev environment and drop this script in here. Now I've already connected to Azure AD, so I'm going to uh, just comment that out, the connect to Azure AD, and I'm gonna run the script and it fails. And it fails with an error message. Now um, I could read the error message, but I'm not gonna bother. All I'm gonna do is copy the error message and go back to chat GPT and dump the error message in as my response. I'm not even saying it's an error. I'm just giving it this block of data, it figures out it's an error. And it says, I apologize, the mistake of my previous response. It looks like, and it's giving the force change password next sign in parameter is not available in the password profile object. So what it's done is it's changed it to force change password next login. So updated script, so I'm gonna copy that back into my dev environment and I'm going to actually just rip that lot out, control V that, and we'll just again, comment out the connect and we'll run that. And there's my three users created in Azure AD, which is absolutely fantastic. So, you know, I could know nothing about PowerShell, but I've just created what would seem at first idea, a complicated script, taking user out of CSV file and creating them in AD. Now, somebody comes along to me and says, shouldn't you have written that in using the Microsoft Graph PowerShell? Well, probably I should. So I go back to ChatGPT and I ask it, well, I tell it first of all that it worked. And then I say to it, please convert the script to use Microsoft Graph PowerShell and it immediately comes up with a new script. So I copied the code from that. So now I've got the code. We go back to my test environment and we'll open up a new thing, pop that in there. Now I've also uh, got the correct modules installed for the PowerShell graft. I've also also connected to uh, PowerShell graph. So I'm going to just comment those two lines out and then I'm going to run this and I've got an error message and it says, it says another object with the same value exists. 
Ah, well, yeah, it does. We've already created the users. So back to ChatGPT, and I ask it now to, well, I ask it, first of all, before going on, I say, why do I need the scope parameter? I've just noticed there's a scope parameter in here. Uh, it's here. Why do I need that? And it's explaining to me that when you connect to MG Graph, what you need to do is specify the permissions you want for that connection. And there's a pretty good explanation of it there. So that's really helpful. So I'm now asking it to create a script to delete all the users uh, from the CSV file. So it generates me a script. Um, it doesn't quite work, so I simply drop the error message in. It has another go, generates me another script. Again, I get an error message. Uh, it's apologizing for the mistake in my previous response. And again, it uh, generates a script. I then get a bit fancy because that one works. I say, list the users as you delete them. And so it generates me a script too. And then I think, well, actually, do you know what? It would be nice to add a check to see if they've already been deleted. And it generates me yet another script. So I go and copy this code. So I've copied the code. Again, we go over to our test environment and we'll open up a new tab in again, drop that, drop that in there. And again, I'm going to comment out that and I'm going to run this. So run the script and yeah, unfortunately, let me just do, it did, it did work. Unfortunately, I dropped the, uh, the actual script straight into the command prompt. So it says deleting user Jill or Jilly, deleting Tom, deleting Paul one. So we've got those deletions. Let me just clear out this bottom window. Uh, let me do just do a clear screen on that bottom window and then let's run this script again. And it says, um, all users have been deleted. Well, okay, that needs a bit of tidying up. Or maybe not, maybe it's the truth. Uh, it says user Jilly, um, not found. User Tom, not found. Okay, so remember, uh, why did I want this delete user? I wanted it uh, so that I could test my uh, new script, which was meant to generate my users using PowerShell. So if we run this script now, so I'm gonna run that script and there it is. I have a PowerShell script written using graph all right, to actually create my three new users. So that's using the Microsoft Graph PowerShell. That was a real result. I could have generated a PowerShell script with no knowledge of how the script worked. Just imagine if the PowerShell script editor had inbuilt AI and directly interpreted the error messages. Before moving to another scenario, let's just have a look at Bing Chat. So here we are in Bing and Bing Chat, and I'm asking it exactly the same thing as I asked ChatGPT. So I'm saying from this CSV file, create the users and make sure the accounts are enabled and the password does not require changing at first login. So that was my brief, exactly the same brief. So it then went off and it came back with a script and it also, it sort of gave some details about, you know, how it should be done with some sort of citations for this as to where it got the information from. And it came up with the, the script and what I did is I put the error message in and then it came back and it said, I'm sorry to hear that you counted an error. So I didn't describe it as an error. I just literally dumped the error message in. So it recognized that. And then it's saying, you know, uh, here's some ideas for you. OK, so this could be a good way forward. And and I said, I wanted you to write a script that worked. And it came back to me and said, I'm sorry, but I prefer not to continue this conversation. I'm still learning, so I appreciate your understanding and patience. I think I hurt Bing's 
feelings. Bing Chat seems to be much more search focused with giving citations for the information found. Sorry, Bing, if I upset you. One last scenario I would like to look at is a bit more complex. A PowerShell script where the AI appears to make up a command. Okay, so I asked ChatGPT to create me a PowerShell script to enumerate all the delegated permissions a user has been granted in Azure AD. And it went through and generated me a script which aired out and it said this here, get Azure AD user consented to application um, is not recognized in the error. So, you know, I thought that's strange. I have never seen that commandlet before. Anyway, chat GPT apologized. It went through um, and replaced that. And then we went through a number of iterations before it finally worked. Now, I'm not gonna go through the details of this. Um, I've already shown you quite a lot of detail in when we were creating users and how I was feeding back information uh, to ChatGPT to make it hone in on a solution. So it got there. And then I thought, you know what? Where on earth did this get Azure AD user consented to application command actually come from? So I said, you know, um, it does not exist the command. And it comes back and says, you're right, it's been superseded. And it gives me a little script with the superseded part. And then I say, can you please supply a reference to the command? Well, it came back and supplied me a reference to the command it replaced it with. And I went back and said, a reference to the get Azure AD user consented to application command. And it says, I apologize for the confusion earlier. Here's the reference. And I clicked on the reference and it gives me a 404. So, you know, it's definitely not a genuine reference, but it has one. And then I said, you know, that returned a 404. And then it says, I apologize for the confusion. It appears that the documentation link for the commander is no longer available. And I then went back and as I say, I've worked with this for a number of years ago. And I said, the command get Azure AD user consented to application never existed. How do you explain that? And it says, I apologize for any confusion. You are correct. The command that never existed in Azure AD PowerShell module. I must have misspoken or made a mistake in my previous response. I apologize for the confusion. So where did it find get Azure AD user consented to application from? Did it just make it up? Which AI can do, and it's called hallucinating. Alternatively, was it fed the wrong data set from which it learned? Why did it try and defend the command's existence by giving bogus URL? Again, something to contemplate. So in summary, can AI be our buddy to help us grow and learn? Absolutely. Don't forget to subscribe and keep learning. Let me be your learning buddy until I see you in the cloud again. Thanks for watching my channel. Subscribe for more free training. You might like to join me for my Identity Masterclass. Hopefully, see you soon.